Iraq is specifically, uh, you answered the reason what's going on in Iraq, is that because we do not understand each other. And the second thing is, uh, I can tell you with a lot of conviction that I'm very familiar with the, with the history of Judaism and Christianity, and that uh, uh, Christianity, for instance, had a lot of strife that uh, resulted in a lot of bloodshedding. And specifically, I will just mention one story to you, where the Catholics attacked other Catholics who didn't agree with them 100%, where they asked the Archbishop, they said, you know, we can't tell who's a Catholic from a Catholic who disagrees with us. The Archbishop said, kill them all, and God would sort, would sort it out. That's how bad it was. And that Christianity, just very recently, actually came to have peace with each other, the Christian sects, and that's when they started having dialogue when they start studying with each other, when they start sitting down with each other, and understanding that there is each other's differences. I do not advocate that we, we should focus on our differences, but what I advocate is that we should understand each other's differences, and there's a big difference. Now, what's going on in Iraq, sister, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the situation in Iraq makes all of our hearts bleed. They bleed. And the situation in Iraq, if you look at the South, it's mostly Shias, the, the Sunni triangle, and I think it's a demeaning word to call it Sunni triangle, but let's just use the term. And then the Kurds, who are the vast majority of them are Sunnis, but some of them are Shias. They divided that way so that we could accept that division. But what I, what I would argue, sister, is that if the South were Africans, and, uh, and uh, the Sunni triangle were uh, named Oriental, that's exactly what they would fight about, what they would be fighting about. The problem in Iraq is that you have the same tribes. The same exact tribe, some of them are Sunnis, some of them are Shias. They all speak Arabic. They're not Persians, they're not Turks, they're not anything else. They all are, they have the same race, they're all Arabs. They have nothing else to fight about, except to, to find that uncommon thing between them, which is Sunni and Shia. So, it is easy for someone to say, because you guys are Sunnis and Shias, you can fight. And we know at the beginning, they tried and they tried and tried and tried until they broke the camel back, right? Right? What allowed them, what gave them the opportunity to reach that degree, is the ignorance about, about each other. Now, sister, when, uh, I'll give you examples. Uh, our scholars, Sayyid Sistani, may Allah bless him and prolong his life, said that when Shias came to the city and were being killed every day, let's fight back. He said, if all my children get killed by a suicide bomber, I will tell you it's haram for them to go, to go fight back. Sayyid Muhammad Hassan says that if in Iraq and anywhere in the world, if a Shia and Sunni are killing each other, they're both going to hell. You know, he's taken that from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, says, لا ترجعوا بعد الكفار عند المباد لكم الطالبا. Do not turn after me, kuffar, killing each other, killing the necks of each other. That's exactly what we're doing here. But sister, if we knew, if Sunnis knew who Shias are, and Shias knew who Sunnis are, they would not kill each other. I would argue with that with anyone. But we don't. What the picture that was drawn of Shias in the minds of Sunnis, not all Sunnis, but by these Deviant, but this deviant group is that they are, they're worthy of killing. You kill them, you go to heaven. They're bad. They worship Ali. They have a different Quran. They have Mus'haf. They have a thousand and one lies about Shias. And now, Shias start building up things too. They're not true about Sunnis. They don't like Ahl Bayt. They're not Asad. They, you know, which is not true. Unfortunately, what Shias are describing now when they talk about Sunnis, they're describing Salafis, not Sunnis. And unfortunately, when Sunnis are talking about Shias now, they're talking about a group that doesn't exist. Find me a Shia, and Allah is my witness, find me a Shia who doesn't believe that all the Imams are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we have the same Quran that all Muslims have, and I'll give you a million dollars. Guarantee. So, so you also make a point uh, with regards to why are we the ones doing it, Christians are not doing it, Hindus are living peacefully. You've got to understand that there are instigators at play in this game. It's not a secret. Yeah. I mean, if you go on the websites, you'll find that there is a plethora. There are uh, huge numbers of what we call distracting websites against Islam, particularly having, for example, fake Quran. You know, the Jews were known to have published more than a million Quran that was that had expunged some of those verses that condemned the Bani Israel. And they started circulating it in the in the community. You find false uh, statements against the prophet. Websites to try to you know dissuade people from Islam, but you won't find any Muslim, Sunni and Shia, making websites maligning the Christians. We're not there maligning the Jews. You won't find a website 
that maligns any particular group, not even maligns the Hindus, for example. We don't go out making fun or fabricating things that their gods are this, or we don't think the Christians are, are this way or that way. The reason is because when you are truthful, you don't, you don't need to go further. It's the liars who need to instigate. So the reason we are under the gun is precisely because the power of Islam, when Allah says, وَلَّا لِأَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَىٰ وَالدِّينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ it will supersede over all religions. This is a fear. It's a fear tactic. And one well-known system that seems to be working, and Iraq is a classic example that we were talking about four years ago when this battle started, that watch. When, the, when this country that is invading gets their feet stuck in concrete, at least it appears this way, what they will do tactically is what we call controlled chaos, and the way you control this chaos is what we call divide and conquer. It's a classic rule, it's not something new. Even in the time of the Holy Prophet in Medina, you find the tribes of Bano, uh, you know, the Aws and Hazraj, or on each other's throats, okay? And it was the Holy Prophet who galvanized them instantly and brought peace into the Middle East in that region. So I think we need to take a lesson from that. I, I was just going to respond to that very quickly. I agree with you, brother, that there are instigators at play. I agree with you that there's a plethora of websites out there. There, there are a plethora of websites out there demonizing. They're, they claim to be Sunni uh, websites, and they, they batten out Shias and Shia websites doing the same thing about Sunnis. And it, it creates antagonism, and it creates hate amongst both of our people. But the reason why I say we don't need to focus on the differences is because because you is because if you come in here and you tell our Shia and Sunni audience that this is what the Sunnis are saying about us, then people in here leave with a little bit of hate. And what we've done is we've taken that propaganda that they had on their website and now we've spread it to our masses. Do we really need to be doing that? I mean, I don't even have a good understanding of my own faith. I don't even have a good understanding of Shiism, I don't think, as of yet. So for me to try and understand Sunnis... Yeah, but with due respect, I, I, you, know, I, 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 you listened to the presentation just like I did. I don't see where I can walk out of here seriously unless I'm already uh, tuned uh, in a negative way. How can I walk out of here with the presentation that was given where I would have even a little bit of hate. I, I don't see where the hatred was brought for. Maybe you saw something that, uh, with due respect, but you know, there are some questions in the back there. I'd like for you to maybe make a comment on that, inshallah. Uh, uh, you know. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, speaker number one, actually. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you talk about the differences, actually, and uh, I was hoping that you could highlight uh, the, if you could highlight um, the differences uh, between Sunni and Shia when it comes to Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, and Ali. Um, of course, we talked about Yalla uh, Hadmarsi and Ali. Uh, and second question to you, Brother Rajab Ali. Um, you talked about uh, the influence of Prophet Muhammad's teaching. Uh, so if, if it's so important that, that our daily life and our belief is depend on the teaching of Rasulullah, then why do we really need 12 imams, if you could kindly address that? You know, I'll give a brief uh, answer to your question, brother. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, the Sunnis uh, believe that Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali were the rightly guided uh, Khalifas of the Muslim. Uh, uh, Shias uh, believe that the election of Abu Bakr, the assignment of Ali, and the election of, of Uthman wasn't the correct thing to do because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigned Ali as the successor. There lies in the political differences. I think it goes back to the question that you asked. It's a very good question. If the Prophet is so important, then what, what, what's so important about the 12 Imams? Well, there are two quick, quick answers I'll give you. Number one, the main reason is because it is the command of Allah through the Holy Prophet. Because the Holy Prophet appointed them, that's why it's so important. Okay? So the 12 Imams are not a concoction of the Ja'fari school of thought, or it's not a concoction of the Shia, because they didn't have anything better to do. It's a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Allah says, Ya ladina amanu ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul wa ulil amri minkum. 
Meaning this, the third group is with us. Now if someone says it's a king or a president, okay, then when that president dies, you need to follow someone else. But you find even our brothers of al Jamaa insist on following the caliphs. So Ali al min kum means that you have to abandon them because they were caliphs of that time. You've got a caliph of today who is Abdullah.